Play Network. This is Rantin' and Raven with Raider, and I'm your host, the comic book collecting, box issue diving, back issue filing, Simonson and Lovin', Rantin' and Raven, son of a gun, Mike Raider. So, in our last issue, we talked about a collection that is smaller and uh, more focused. So, I mentioned in there using filing cabinets for a storage system. They don't take up as much space as multiple boxes. They are a little bit sturdier, obviously, and they make easy access. You don't have to be moving up and down, up and down, off and on, things like that. Uh, No lids either. (laughs) So we're going to kind of talk about that system today. Um, I'm going to show you how I did things. You're more than welcome to make up your own way, but here's the good, the systems work really well for me. So getting into it, first thing we're going to talk about is the actual cabinet itself. So what you need is a legal size filing cabinet. And what that means is you got to have one that's 18 inches wide. I mean, because once they're legal size, they actually increase the drawer depth and width. And with the increased width, you can get two books side by side. And um, the depth is long enough for the book to sit in upright. If not, you're going to be storing horizontally. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Some people, I think, do it, but I would not do it. So, <clears throat> the um, drawer length, and I always make my um, dividers that I'm going to explain here to divide, separate side to side a little bit shorter because you can obviously file back into the cabinet. The drawer st- goes stays in the cabinet, and you uh, and with a file or something, you can just bend it forward, pull it out. But you don't want to bend your comics forward and yank them out because that will obviously ruin them. So I always slide my end piece forward that makes my drawer shorter. And that would give me an about, it gives me about a 25 to 25 and a half, 25 and a quarter inch drawer. Now, you're like, okay, what does that mean? Well, what that means is it's about 10 inches longer than your average short box and only 2 inches shorter than your long box. So we're getting a good amount of space. So if an average long box holds 250 to 300, you're probably looking to hold 275, a solid 275, 250, depending, again, depending on what you um, actually store your books in. Uh, I use regular bags and boards, so my thicknesses, and if you want to know about thicknesses, go over and catch my my buddy Keith Sauer explaining on how a bag is made. He'll talk to you about the thicknesses of the mylar or the polypropylene or polyethylene, whatever they're making the bags out of, and all what all that means. But let's stick with it. a standard size, I think is usually, I, I can't remember what it is on mine, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember anymore. I could probably find out. The standard size I use are 2 mil polypropylene, average current comic book bags. So, that would give me, I think I fit about t- over 200. Well, probably close to 250 easy in there, and that gives me a little access so the books move back and forth. So, that's a good, those are all the big, um, the big difference there. So now we're looking at, just so each side is almost a long box. It's over short box. It's basically, when you add them up, you are getting three short boxes into each drawer. So that if you have them stacked high, now you got six short boxes into two drawers. So each cabinet, can hold two, three, four drawers, um, three short boxes, 12 short boxes. 12 short boxes plus a little extra. So you're looking between 12 and 13 short boxes. Re- to me, really good investment. Because the problem with short boxes is, yeah, they stack okay, but once you get so high, they get wobbly, they crush the tops down, and you'll notice that uh, they get all crunchy and crushed. Like I have this one here, it's like been smashed down. The sides, like, it's bowed because of the weight, and it caves in just like that. You can see where it's ha- that's happened. So, you don't, I, I don't like that. I don't want that with my boxes. So, I really like this system. So, now, 
with that, I'm gonna give you a flip, flip you around here. So now we're gonna take a look at the cabinets themselves. So standard cabinets, I mean, this one's wonderfully, it's not got painted yet, but. So we're gonna look in here and you can see how I have, as it was pulling out, I'm using a short box for my actual dividers. Um, pretty nice, right? So, and then you can see how I actually have it divided up. But the short box for the dividers works pretty well. Okay, now we're ready to take a look at the box itself that we're going to use for our divider. So the first thing you wanna do is cut off all the bottom flaps. Number one, two, three, four. And you'll end up with a box that looks somewhat <laughs> like this, right? It'll be all flat on the bottom. So, you then, when, they're, when it's cut to that point, now you're gonna cut it in half here. Let me get this box up here so we can use it for references. You cut in half here. You cut along here so you have a long side and a handle side. Now usually, for every drawer, you're gonna to need to cut, a, you have to cut this flap where it's glued off. And I usually end up having to cut off two of the lines, the corrugated lines as well on each end. That will give you a pretty even measure. Now you can take a look and you might not have to do that or you um, may. One cabinet I have is slightly, it's legal size, but it's not quite as wide. It just depends on the manufacturer. So. Um, you have to just kind of cut that little bit off and you'll, you'll measure, you'll lay it in and measure it side to side and you'll know. So once you're here, then you also need to cut a little bit off the bottom because they're a little taller than a drawer. They don't quite fit into a drawer, a box wall. So then you will lay one half in. Remember we're here, we only are working with this half. You'll lay that half in to the drawer and you will mark with a pencil or whatever you have along the edge because you're probably going to find that you have in the center a contoured area. Um, you'll see it here. It's going to uh, allow not allow the boxes to sit straight. It's going to want to dip in the corners. So I always just cut a notch out and that's again probably another half inch up. Cut that out and make it there and then I have my whole bottom where this is going to rest inside that little trough. So you'll then take that edge, you do it to both sides, and then once you're there, you now lay your boxes, um, the two, two halves, side by side in the drawer. Remember, we've already pulled our backing piece of the drawer forward, so we're at our proper length. You lay them side by side. This would be looking down into it, and looking at it from a top view. This is what you would see from the top view. And I mark it with a pencil always, um, just on one side, because one side's obviously white and one side's brown because they naturally fold easy. This is why it's so easy to use a box. And then I take and go to a table or wherever I'm at, and I tape it. As you can see the glare, it's coming off the tape. I tape up the lines uh, where they overlap. And then I tape across the top and bottom, especially across the top where I'm gonna be reaching. I, don't, I always feel like I hit that. Um, I also tape, the handles down, I tape them inside, I wrap right around, and then I wrap over and keep that nice and flat. And so now at that point, you now have a divider. You will then take the divider, drop it into your drawer, and start stacking your books. Pretty simple. Um, I think it takes, after you've done it a few times, it takes like five minutes. I don't know. The first ones took me a little bit longer because I kind of figured out how I wanted to do it, but it only takes about five minutes. You probably have boxes laying around uh, because we've been collecting. Soon as you move to a, sh a new system, you can use that instead of just scrapping them out. I use them for an actual purpose. So I hope this was helpful. Hope that it worked out for works out for everybody, and this is something we can use. We can all use moving forward. Uh, next time, we'll find a new thing to talk about. Uh, with this smaller collection. So I want to thank everybody for stopping in and watching the video. I hope that it was informative. Uh, I hope that my antics here, I'm a little bit thrown off because something's not working with my phone, but I thank everybody for how it was going. Um, and 
I want you to, if you like it, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit like on the video, throw your comments down, tell me what you think, tell me what I need to change, tell me what you liked or didn't like, whatever you've got to say. Let's uh, make sure we keep making comic book collecting fun again, and thanks again for stopping by the Mick Bigfoot Play Network. Have a good one.